Hi, welcome to Sumo Logic Quick Start Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about search and get you up and running quickly with search in your own Sumo Logic account. So let's start by talking about some basic search syntax. A search is composed of one or more of these basic components. So the first component is your keyword search or your constraints. And this is where you determine what type of data you're looking for. So you might be looking for errors, you might be looking for a certain string, and you might be looking for certain metadata tags, which we'll be talking about more later. Once the keyword search has determined what records are going to come back, then you can pull fields out of those records with parse commands and do your data classification. Next, you can take actions like where or if to do things to the data or limit or filter the data. You can then use group by operators to actually create displays of the data. And then once you have those displays of data, you can sort or limit the results. So let's get right into it. Now once you log into Sumo Logic, this is your basic search screen. So here you can see the search window where you can type your searches. And the time window where you can choose the time that you want to see the, the search in. Let's talk about that first. So first off, you have pre-populated values here, like today, yesterday, last 15 minutes. Now you don't have to use those, those can be very useful, but you can also put in your own time values. Now, for example, you can put in absolute. So for example, uh, I could put in something from two o'clock today to 2.30 today. Now remember that this is in your own local time zone or the time zone in your browser. So it may not be in a time zone of your servers, just remember that. Now you can also have shortcuts to do your own custom relative searches. So for example, I can do uh, minus 10 minutes with an M or minus 10 hours or minus one hour or minus 24 hours. I can do minus one day. Now I can also do two relatives here. So for example, I can say, between minus one hour, minus two hours, say, and minus one hour. So it'll take from one hour ago to minus to two hours ago. And it'll take that hour range. So you can do combinations like that to get exactly what you want. Now in this case, just for simplicity, I'm gonna search for the last five minutes. Now that we have the time constraints that we would like, what we wanna do is we wanna constrain what we see in the searches. So the first thing you can do is use our own metadata tags. So you have a bunch to select from, collector, so that's the name of the collector, the source, the source category, which is the custom metadata tag that we make available to you. The source host, which is the, usually the host name of the system where the logs have been taken from or syslog where they've been forwarded from, unless you've overridden that. And source name is the actual name of the log if it's a log file. Now one of the shortcuts you can use as well is that if you click on any one of the tags down here, that actually will take that metadata tag and populate it. So if we click here, I will get source category equals Apache access. Now I can also add this and use wildcards. I can say, for example, Apache star, which will give me access and errors. But I could also use Apache slash you know, access like this and only type out part of the name. So you can use this as a way, and you can put this in, in the beginning as well. You can use this as a way to use source categories to create whatever tags you need to, to differentiate your data. So let's search for Apache, Apache access. Now the next thing I might want to do it search for a specific string. So I can type that up in the bar here. So I can type, for example, get, and there's an implied and here. So it will look for the source category of Apache access, as well as the word get. Now I can also select something here and then add it with specific operators. So I can say, for example, and, and it'll take what I already had and then and it with HTTP. Now you can also have or, or not, or any of the Boolean operators that you would expect. Now another trick that's good to know is that within these categories below here, you can also look at the surrounding messages. So it's a very good way of zooming in on exactly what you care about. So for example, I could look at a plus minus 
one minute range around this one particular message on that category. So it'll look for Apache access and only within a very specific two minute range. Okay, so let's take a look at some very basic aggregations. So if you want to create any sort of dashboard or really just look at your data in a more aggregated manner, you need to have use aggregation or group by operators. And really the easiest one to use is the count. So for example here, if I just say I want to look at my get, again using our keywords here, and then I want to count the number of get statements. If I do count, it will just count those exactly for me. Now what I could also do here is I could count by something. So for counting by, I can use any field that I have available. So in this case right now, we have this, the metadata tags available. So I'm going to count by source category. And here we see I have logs from both Apache Error and Apache Access. So I can differentiate those. Now the next thing I might want to do is I really want to know how often these happen over time. So I could go back here and use what we call our time slice operator. Now the time slice operator puts everything, all of the messages into time buckets. Now just like in the time window to the right, you can use the same notation for your bucket size. So I can do one minute, I can you know do five minutes, one hour, one day, whatever makes sense in the context of your search. Here I'm gonna do one minute and I'm going to change this back to the last 15 minutes so we can have something more interesting. Now, after I have put things into time buckets, that's really not doing me good yet. I really want to know, I really want to look at things over time. I actually want to count things within each time slice. So, using our group by operator count, I can count by. Now, every operator that produces output, unless you name it, will actually produce something, an underscore variable name. So, for example, time slice produces an underscore time slice variable and count produces an underscore count variable. So here I can count by underscore time slice. Now I'm going to get my aggregates tab again and I'm getting a count per one minute time slice. And now I can start to make some nice graphs. So I can make a column graph over time, a line graph, an area graph, so on and so forth. Thank you for watching this short tutorial on search. This should hopefully get you up and running on searching for specific things within your data. Now I encourage you to watch the rest of our tutorials including parsing your data and making dashboards. Thanks so much for your time.